So you have a mentor. How do you make the most out of the relationship? Before we do a deep dive, let's start by saying that there is no perfect mentor. First, there are fewer research supervisors than there are mentees. Second, the research supervisor may not have the exact skill set you need and the perfect personality fit for you. Third, they often do not have the bandwidth to give you full attention. That's because each research supervisor is assigned to many mentees and they have many other direct reports. Hi, this is Dr. Jia. Today, I'm going to share a concept called mentoring up. What does it mean and how do you do it? Mentoring up is a concept borrowed from the business world managing up. What it means is you'll lead and manage the mentoring relationship. In other words, you will make your mentor's job easier. Usually at this stage, people complain to me, oh, that's not my job. Right. Also remember this, many research mentors and supervisors are not obligated to mentor you. Many are doing this to help researchers succeed and often they are not paid to do so. Remember, if you make the job, your mentor's job easier, they have more free time to clear a path for you. Another benefit of mentoring up is you are training your own leadership skills. So let's go through how to do that. Number one, align your goals with your mentor's goal. How much do you understand your mentor? what their goals are, what do they value, and how they are being evaluated. In general, principal investigators or your research mentors uh, are evaluated by their research productivity, how many paper publications, how much money they get through grants, and how they are bringing up the reputation of the institutions. Think about being expert in the field, speaking, talks, presentations. Also think, what are their weaknesses? What are their strengths? Because some are content experts, some are great connectors, some are great at over overall study design, but may not have deep data analytical skills. Knowing their strengths and weaknesses will help you decide what you can get from, what help you can get from them. Early in a relationship, get to know them. Ask them casually. I'm curious, how do you envision your next step of your research lab? More often than not, they love talking about what they're passionate about. Number two, be proactive. What do I mean by that? You plan a meeting schedule, you set the agenda, you bring up the topics you want to discuss. You keep track of your own progress and keep track of your own deadlines. And importantly, communicate by giving them updates through email. Don't expect your mentor to babysit you. Sometimes I find that when people get into the mentee role, they automatically assume the role of a student. You are an adult, a highly trained clinician, some with medical degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs. So don't change your standards just because now you are a mentee. Number three, master the art of listening. Listen to their advice. You do not have to take their advice as a final word, but do approach all advice with an open mind. Don't shut it down as soon as you hear something you don't like. Now, some advanced tip here. Listen carefully to what they are not saying. If your, mentor, if your mentor is repeating themselves multiple times, listen and take the hint. For example, if you hear something like, uh, it seems we are not getting this paper out enough, and you keep saying, yeah, it's fine, but they repeated themselves again. Or, oh, I'm a, I'm a bit worried about what the reviewers are gonna say about this part. And even though they may not want to be pressuring you, they could be unconsciously doing so because they're genuinely, genuinely concerned about it. So it's better for you to bring it up and discuss it further. Number four, make your mentor look good. How do you do that? Mentors are great at providing perspectives that can bring your research project to a higher level or guide you in a specific way. So do great work and highlight how they have helped you. Also equip them with the language to speak about your work. When research supervisors meet with the department chair or dean, they have to give progress reports on their mentees. So make it easy for them by provide, providing short snippets on your own progress. You can include actual pro, um, project updates. You can also include things like your skills and competency that you have gained. Also, help them see blind spots. So what do I mean by that? Researchers are experts in a subfield. So by nature, they are very aware about their own niche and less so about things outside of their niche. So as we have all experienced it ourselves, once you're an expert in something, we, we just can't see it the other way. For example, I'm trained in epidemiology and big data set research, but I don't do mixed method research or anything with machine learning. So if somebody comes with me with a research question, I can only think about a few ways to study that question. A good and adaptive mentor will welcome new ideas and new techniques. But if you're not sure, you can always test the water a little. One way to frame it is like, oh, I was with the usability that day and they use X method to answer this research question. Shall we try that? So now, 
The big question is, how do we know if your mentoring up is working? So these are some signs. First, they are not stressed during meetings anymore, or you're actually making progress after each meeting. They are asking you for your opinion more often, or they are opening up opportunities for you, or pushing, or pushing you to think bigger and more into the future. That means you have created a mental space and bandwidth for them to think about you and your future. Now, what if it is not working out? What I've been talking about, uh, about mentoring up was based on the assumption that you have a mentor with good intentions. There are times where your effort will not be appreciated. You might have to adjust it based on your own judgment. Even mentors with the best of intentions can have bad days. But if you have, if you notice that your mentor is toxic, being competitive with you, then don't mentor up any further, find a new mentor. And before I end, I want to share this most important point. I learned this beautiful quote from Doug Stewart. I'm going to put a link. Mentorship isn't something that is done to you. Rather, mentorship is something you do for yourself with the help of other people. So take charge of your mentorship. I'll see you in the next video.